वेलकम अगेन टुडे वी विल डिस्कस मैग्नीशियम एंड सोडियम बेस्ड रिएजेंट्स सो मैग्नीशियम बेस्ड रिएजेंट्स इन ऑर्गेनिक सिंथेसिस ऑर्गेनोमेटालिक कंपाउंड हैविंग मैग्नीशियम कार्बन बॉन्ड आर नोन एज गिग्ना रिएजेंट्स दीज आर वेरी वेल नोन रिएजेंट्स गिग्ना रिएजेंट वाज फर्स्ट डिस्कवर्ड बाय व्हिक्टर गिग्नेट दैट्स व्हाई इट इज कॉल्ड गिग्ना रिएजेंट एंड इन 1900 इट वाज डिस्कवर्ड गिग्नेट रिएजेंट्स आर एक्सट्रीमली स्ट्रांग बेसेस that can react violently with hydroxylic compounds such as water or alcohols so that means the reactions reactions should be carried out in inert condition inert conditions and non hydroxylic solvents so this is very important gignal reagents are highly reactive organometallic reagents generated by treating alkyl or aryl halides with magnesium metal in solvents such as anhydrous ethers and thf this is the preparation rx magnesium 0 thf rmgx so what happens the magnesium get insert into this rx bond and magnesium 0 becomes magnesium 2 here In terms of mechanism, the reaction proceeds through single electron transfer. So first, what happens? Alkyl or aryl halide magnesium, then R X dot minus. So this minus is there, and M G dot plus. So this is the first step happens. That magnesium becomes magnesium dot plus, and now this R X dot minus cleaves. So R dot is formed. So formation of formation of r dot here so this is vital here then this r dot reacts with this magnesium radical magnesium dot plus cation radical to generate this rmg plus and now this is the last step this is the electrophilic species this is the nucleophilic so just the addition reaction happens rmgx is formed Preparation of organo magnesium compounds, Gigna reagents. So we already discussed. Now Rx can be alkyl, vinyl or aryl halide, chloride, bromide, iodide. Solvent diethyl ether. This is the ether solvent or tetrahydrofuran. So this is the tetrahydrofuran. This is cyclic ether. alcoholic solvents and water are incompatible with gigna reagents this is the structure of diethyl ether two ethyl group is there and this is cyclic ether tetrahydrofuran reactivity of the alkyl halide iodide is most reactive than bromide than chloride chloride is much more reactive than fluoride followed by alkyl halides then vinyl or aryl halides so vinyl or aryl halides the reactivity will be less the solvent or alkyl halides cannot contain functional groups that are electrophilic or acidic so this is important if you have electrophilic center then gignard gignard will react with electrophilic center so in situ generated gignard will react with electrophilic center so no electrophilic center will be present in the substrate these are incompatible with the formation of the organomagnesium reagent preparation gignard reagent some more preparation through metallation hydrogen metal exchange so one gignard you can convert to another gignard when you treat with rh so this is the hydrogen metal exchange this hydrogen is replaced by mgx so rh becomes rmgx r1 mgx becoming r1 h and this generally this r h should be acidic so acidic hydrogen should be there then the reaction is more facile like this one this alkyne terminal alkyne so this is terminal alkyne so terminal alkyne when it reacts with ethyl magnesium bromide you get this alkaline magnesium bromide plus ethene 
Also cyclopentadiene, we know this is acidic, acidic because this um, you know that he cyclopentadiene anion is aromatic in nature. So, this very acidic in nature, this is aromatic. So, when you treat with ethyl magnesium bromide, you get this cyclopentyl magnesium bromide plus ethane. Reactivity in metallation magnesium ion atom is transferred to a more electronegative atom like ROH R1 MgX, the oxygen is more electronegative here and the magnesium is going to there. So, RO MgX plus R1 H is formed. Similarly, when it reacts with amine, the nitrogen makes a bond with magnesium. So, these bonds are important because they are more stable. R2NH plus R1 MgX, you get this MgX plus R1H. Similarly, with ketone R1 MgX, so this, this bond is forming also that the Gignard addition this R 1 C is also important, but what we want to show that the uh, magnesium is going to transfer to the more electronegative atom. So, here the oxygen is the more electronegative and magnesium is transferred to there. Addition of Gignard reagents to a variety of carbonyl derivative, this is the major reaction that Gignard reagents perform. So, a variety of carbonyl compounds can be employed in the reaction with Gignard reagents, like if you react with formaldehyde formaldehyde then you get the primary alcohol. So, this is very important with formaldehyde you get the primary alcohol alternatively other aldehydes you get a secondary alcohol. So, this R comes from the Gigner reagents. Also with ketone you get a tertiary alcohol. So, this is the preparation of different alcohol from Gignard reagents, these are very useful reaction that primary alcohol can be obtained from reaction with formaldehyde, other aldehydes can give a secondary alcohol and ketone will give tertiary alcohol. Similarly, ester also give tertiary alcohol. So, in situ the ketone is formed first, then the ketone reacts further to generate tertiary alcohol and two R groups come from the Gignard. So, two equivalent of Gignard is required. Similarly, if Y is a other living group, then if you do the slow addition, the ketone isolation is possible, but difficult like Y is equal to halogen, then OCOR which is anhydride, then SR. Also, formamide can give you the aldehyde, that is also useful method to get a, a aldehyde and generally this also has to be slow addition. So, aldehyde will not further react with Gignard. And if you have a one ray amide, this is also very useful reaction. If you have a one ray amide, then you can stop at ketone. This mechanism already we discussed. So, ketone formation is very useful method utilizing one ray amide and Gignard. This R comes from the Gignard reagents. Also, with carbon dioxide, Gignard reagent can give the carboxylic acid and cerium 3, when it is added, then generally it gives the one to addition with alpha beta unsaturated ketone, but when you add the cerium, then specifically the one to addition product is have formation happens. So, one to addition product. This because this is getting activated by cerium 3 and selectively the RMGX adds to the carbonyl group and you get a allylic tertiary alcohol. Alternatively, if you add the copper 1, then you get the 1 4 addition product, 1 4 addition. Why? Because this is the Gignard reagent is a hard reagent. Alternatively, R2CUX it is a soft reagent. And what happens? This one 
this is the heart center so this is heart center heart center and this is the soft center so hard nucleophile will add to the hard electrophilic center similarly soft electrophile will add to the soft a uh, soft nucleophile will add to the soft electrophilic center so this is the uh, double bond that's why the one for addition reaction happens so now more details we'll discuss so first we'll discuss gigner reagents to carbonyl groups complexation of the organo magnesium species with the substrate what is the mechanism so first the complexation happens so here the carbonyl binds to the magnesium because this is the more electronegative that we discussed that will come to with the magnesium and now this solvent is there this can stabilize this uh, transition state and now the next step involves nucleophilic attack of gigner reagent on the electron deficient carbon of the carbonyl group by molecular complex so here what happens this is the this one now here another gignard comes here rmgx so six membered cyclic transition state is formed you can see here two magnesium are there that means two gignard are there so first this oxygen carbonyl oxygen binds to the magnesium are getting activated with magnesium and this x again binds with another molecule of gignard and finally this r will be transferred to the carbonyl group this is the r and this is transferred to the and this alkoxic compound is formed and now if you treat with um, acidic work up then you get the tertiary alcohol so the intermediate form in the above state is hydrolyzed to give a tertiary alcohol so this is an useful method to generate tertiary alcohol from carbonyl that is the ketones here and you get a tertiary alcohol and this is important the six member cyclic transition state is formed by two um, gignard reagents if carbonyl group is attached with a living group the tetrahedral adduct break down to generate a co group that undergoes a first second addition step so here if a star is there and now this gignard reagents will add so this is the tetrahedral intermediate so after this tetrahedral intermediate this can collapse to a carbonyl compound so E, this ethoxy group will eliminate here and you get this uh, carbonyl and this carbonyl group which is generated in c2 can react further with a more equivalent of gignard to generate the tertiary alcohol gignard reaction with carbon dioxide reaction stops at the carboxylate stage at is resistant to further nucleophilic attack so this is the reaction here this is aryl magnesium halide now the carboxylate carbon dioxide is added to this and this intermediate is formed carboxylate this is inert to further nucleophilic so here further uh, the gignard reaction so the further nucleophilic attack here so further gignard addition will not happen and after aqueous work up you get the carboxylic acid so this is very useful method to generate carboxylic acid because the one carbon homologation you can tell also this one carbon homologation so this gignard reagent when reacts with carbon dioxide then this carboxylic acid can be generated after work up so this is very useful method to generate a carboxylic acid from a aryl or alkyl halides gignard reagents as nucleophiles in nucleophilic aliphatic substitution reactions also it is very much used like here if it is activated alkyl halide like benzyl bromide or benzyl chloride then allyl chloride allyl bromide then you can get this product so normal substitution reaction is possible with activated halides and now if there is normal alkyl halides 
R dash is alkyl, then you need to add copper to activate this alkyl halide and then only the Gigna reaction will happen. So, for normal alkyl halide, for normal alkyl halides activation with copper 1 is required, but if it is if, if it is activated then you do not need the copper 1 activation. Also epoxide can be reacted with Gignard to generate this primary alcohol. Also oxygen this is also an another reaction with oxygen you can get the hydroperoxide later we will see that you can generate the alcohol also. And the hydroperoxide can be used to convert to alcohol. Also it can do reaction with amines to generate amines. So, this is very useful reactions amine to amine and with one uh, alkyl or aryl group comes from the Gigna reagent. And with nitriles you can generate the carbonyl compound. So, what happens? This is the intermediate form. So, one intermediate forms here this one might be and this after hydrolysis it generates the carbonyl compound because this is unstable without here no alkyl group is there then it is unstable simply limine then you get the carbonyl compound. With S8 sulfur you get the thiol and when it is reacted with disulfide it generates the sulfide, sulfide as well as the thiol. So, when it reacts, so then what happens this bond is getting breakage. So, this bond is getting breakage and R, so here R comes, so R reacts here and SS bond is clipped. So, you get a, a disulfide, so you get a sulfide from disulfide. Some more examples of the addition of Gigna reagents like here if you have a ester group this aromatic ester and this is a Gignard reagent with double bond. So, double bond is not an problem and you get this tertiary alcohol this is published in tetrad and letters ether is a solvent. Also this is a chiral ketone and if you add phenyl magnesium bromide then you get the product and this is 94 percent major isomer. So, this stereochemistry is important where the phenyl adds from the top face because of this geometry phenyl is coming from the top face and this product is formed this was published in organic letters. Also this is a chiral. So, all these are diastereoselective addition. So, here also this chiral and what happens the when this uh, addition happens then it has been found that this side addition that is the double bonded side only 37 percent. On the other hand addition taking place from this side is 61 percent. So, this is the Gigna reagent you can see here there is ether motif is present, but in Gignard condition the ether is stable and this was published in tetrad and letters. Some more examples here the ester is there and 2.2 equivalent phenyl magnesium bromide this is commercially available 3 molar in TH shape and this is RT ionic liquid that is the room temperature ionic liquid. So, this is the ionic liquid and in the solvents the reaction is quite fast because there, there is a charge. So, ionic liquid means the charge is there, so positive negative. So, the reaction will be faster because it will stabilize the Gigna reagent and you get the tertiary alcohol in 83 percent isolated yield. It was published in JOC. Also, not only ionic liquid, you can use other ammonium soil like tetrabutyl ammonium chloride and with 1.5 equivalent digline and THF is the solvent. So, what is the structure of digline? So, this is digline and now this addition reaction will happen 
and you can get this product in very good yield. So, possibility is that X can be bromide chloride or can be aryl alkyl. So, this R can be aryl alkyl, R dash can be alkyl phenyl, this can be alkyl phenyl and R double dash can be alkyl allyl aryl. So, this can be alkyl aryl aryl. So, this scope is very broad and defined Gignard as well as ketones can be employed and very good yields are obtained. So, this was published in JOC. Also, if you have a two bromide groups in the aromatic system, then also you can get the product and here the metal halogen exchange have been performed. So, metal halogen exchange because you this bromide first reacted with this Gignard and you get this MgBr, RBr and you can get this also or MgCl here whatever you get this one the Gigna reagent and then with carbon dioxide you get this carboxylate group comes. So, this comes from this reagent, this A, this gives to A and this gives to B. So, you get two actual carboxylic acid from this dihalide, <coughs> this was published in Sinlet. Gignan reagents are useful for forming carbon heteroatom bonds. So, this is also important like here RMGX is treated with tributyl tin chloride and you get this tannin. Also, with BF3 etherate or sodium BF4, you get this boronate. So, this is alkyl boronate. Or alkyl borates, alkyl borates, these are alkyl borates. And now, diphenyl phosphine chloride, you get this pH to PR phosphine compounds. Also, BOM3, you get the dimethyl boronate. And Gigna reagents react with many metal based nucleophiles. For example, they undergo transmetallation with cadmium chloride to give dialkyl cadmium. So, other metal based electrophiles also can be reacted. Like here, 2 RMGX with cadmium chloride, you get the R2 cadmium plus 2 MGX chloride. So, this is very important the R, this R MGX is going to here with the cadmium to generate the dialkyl cadmium. Slank equilibrium, now we will discuss slank equilibrium. So, slank equilibrium named after its discoverer William Slank is a chemical equilibrium taking place in solution of Gigna reagents and Hosser base, magnesium amide bases. So, other Hosser bases also this equilibrium works. The process described is an equilibrium between two equivalents of an alkyl or aryl magnesium halide on the left of the equation and on the right side one equivalent of the alkyl or diaryl magnesium compound and magnesium halide salt. So, this is the equation actually 2 RMGX it goes to R2 Mg and MgX2. Most Gigner reactions are conducted in ethereal solvents especially diethyl ether and THA. With the chelating diether dioxin, some Gigna reagents undergo a redistribution reaction to give diorgano magnesium compound R is equal to organic group and X is equal to halide. So, this reaction happens, this equilibrium goes to the right side when dioxin is used. So, with dioxin you get the R2 Mg, this is equilibrium is on the right side. This reaction is known as slank equilibrium. The position of the equilibrium is influenced by solvent temperature and the nature of the various substituents. Also, it is known that magnesium center Gigna reagents typically coordinates two molecules of ether such as diethyl ether or tetrahydrofuran. This we have seen. Thus, they are more precisely described as having the formula RMGXL2, where L is equal to an ether. In the presence of monoethers, the equilibrium typically favors the alkyl or aryl magnesium halide. Now, addition of dioxin, which is diether, 
However, leads to selective participation of dihalide MgX2 dioxygen driving the equilibrium completely to the right side of the equation. So, if you use the monoether like diethyl ether or tetrahydrofuran, then you get this RMGX. On the other hand, when diether like dioxygen is used, then you get the equation and uh, this is the R2Mg is the measure. So, the equilibrium is on the right side. Coupling with organic halides also is possible with Gignard reagents. Once we have seen that uh, metal halogen exchange, but also you can do some coupling reactions. Gignard reagents do not typically react with organic halides in contrast with their high reactivity with other main group halides. Gignard reagents participates in carbon carbon coupling reactions in the presence of metal catalyst. So, this is important you have to use metal catalyst for the carbon carbon bond formation. For example, nonyl magnesium bromide reacts with methyl perachlorobenzoate to give para nonyl benzoic acid in the presence of tris acetyl acetonate iron 3 FeAc AC whole 3. So, this is AC AC AC. So, this is acetyl acetone <coughs> after work up with NOH to hydrolyze the ester without acetyl acetonate iron the Gignard reagent would attack the ester group over the aryl halide. So, this is important you have two groups here ester groups and chloride and now you put, put this nonyl nonyl magnesium bromide and with this one this group is activated and now the addition happens to this one. So, what happens iron insert in this one carbon chlorine bond and then this activation happens and you get the cross coupling to get this product. Interestingly here the after NOH you get the hydrolysis of the ester to carboxylic acid. Now, if you do not use metal without metal without metal the normal reaction will happen. So, addition reaction will happen on A star. So, if you do not use the metal then this group will not be activated. So, only the normal addition product will be happened the tertiary alcohol. On the other hand if you use the iron then this carbon chlorine bond is getting activated and now the Gignard addition will happen. So, first two metals oxidative addition reactions will happen like Kumata coupling reaction and now you get this product. Also the coupling of aryl halides with aryl Gignard reagents. Nickel chloride in tetrahydrofuran is also a good catalyst. Additionally an effective catalyst for the coupling of alkyl halides is dilithium tetrachlorocuprate prepared by mixing lithium chloride and copper chloride in THA. The Kumada Koryo coupling gives access to substrate styrene and this work has been reviewed in organic synthesis 2004. So, these are useful methods for the cross coupling reactions with Gignard reagent and these are called the Kumada coupling reactions. So, here the alkyl halide is used with a alkyl magnesium bromide use the iron and with nickel you can get the aryl aryl coupling. So, aryl aryl coupling with nickel catalyst. So, aryl magnesium bromide and then aryl chloride then you need the nickel catalyst. Oxidation reaction also possible the treatment of a Gignard reagent with oxygen gives the magnesium organoperoxide. Hydrolysis of magnesium organoperoxide yields hydroperoxides or alcohol. These reactions involve radical intermediates. So, here you can see that Gignard reacts with oxygen. Now, this R dot is form and O 2 minus M G X plus and now this R dot again reacts with the oxygen and to generate this O O M G X. So, what actually happened? So, here this oxygen so, R M G X is there now oxygen is adding to this bond the R M G X bond. So, that is why in presence of oxygen this R M G X box cleaves and it is going to be R O O M G X. So, oxygen inserts in this R M G X bond to generate this after hydrolysis you get the 
hydro peroxide plus this byproducts HOMGX plus H plus. Alternatively, this compound can react with excess gignard. So, if you have excess gignard, then you can get this will be two molecule ROMGX and which after hydrolysis generate the alcohol. So, excess gignard with excess gignard alcohol will be the product. Otherwise, the hydroperoxide. The synthetic utility of gignard oxidation can be increased by reaction of gignard reagents with oxygen in the presence of an alkene to an ethylene extended alcohol. So, this oxygen chemistry that the this intermediate or this is forming can be useful like here excess is used. So, this intermediate will form and this chemistry was nicely exploited in this Jacks paper where the olefin this uh, oxygen gignard has been added to the olefin and you can get the alcohol here. So, what happens the alkyl group from this gignard adds to the olefin this, this was the olefin and also the oxygen OH group is added and this is very nice method to generate this uh, gignard addition to the olefins. Gignard addition to olefins because olefins generally are unreactive to gignard. So, this was the major discovery that the olefins can be also used in the gignard chemistry if you use oxygen also this olefins should be like styrene derivatives or vinylic like diene also. Dienes also react. Elimination reactions also is possible with gignard with in the wood olefin synthesis the addition of magnesium to certain below halo ethers results in an elimination reaction to the alkene this reaction can limit the utility of gignard reactions. So, suppose this is the leaving group. So, this is the leaving group and uh, when the gignard will form. So, first gignard will form here with metal that is the gigna magnesium here and now this elimination will happen and you get the olefin. Industrial use an example of the Gignard reaction is a key step in the non stereoselective industrial production of tamoxifen currently used for the treatment of estrogenic receptor positive breast cancer in women. So, this was the substrate here this was a ketone and now this phenyl magnesium bromide which is commercially available is added to this and now this can be converted to tamoxifen. So, just H plus if you add then water will eliminate minus H2O. So, this is very important this compound this is tamoxifen this is tetra substituted olefin. So, olefin is tetra substituted here and this olefin is called tamoxifen can be prepared easily if you add gignard phenyl magnesium bromide to this ketone followed by acid treatment with the elimination of water. Addition of Gignard reagents to epoxide we already discussed this now more details negatively charged nucleophiles such as Gignards tend to react with epoxides. Epoxide in a manner similar to the SN2 reaction attack occurs at the least substituted carbon of the epoxide. Like here this epoxide this is the less substituted this is more substituted so this is less substituted. And now, if you use the ethyl magnesium bromide, this less substituted carbon the attack will happen, new carbon carbon bond formation, and now after acid treatment, you get the secondary alcohol. Mechanism 
the addition of nucleophile to epoxide. So, this is the also this oxygen can be activated with the magnesium and then this ethyl group will be added to this center and now this is the new carbon carbon bond formation happens and after acid workup you get the alcohol. Stereochemistry consistent with an SN2 reaction. So, if this reaction is an SN2 that you can prove also. If the reactions occurs at a secondary carbon, we will observe inversion of configuration. So, this is important because we know SN2 reaction the inversion of stereochemistry. This is a property which is associated with SN2 mechanism. So, suppose if you have a this chiral epoxide one cyclopentyl group is present and now this is the tetra substituted, this is tri substituted. So, this is the least substituted carbon this center. Now, the methyl magnesium bromide will add from the down phase because the epoxide is on the up. So, this is up epoxide. So, the down phase attack will happen methyl and you get this one. So, this is regio and stereo selective. So, regio and stereo selective addition this carbon only uh, react. So, this is regio and also stereo selective only attack takes place from the bottom phase and you get the methyl group at the bottom and now the acidic workup will give this alcohol. SN2 type coupling reaction this already we have seen here are some more examples like ethyl magnesium bromide, allyl bromide you get this uh, double bond olefin and magnesium bromide. Also this benzylic magnesium chloride can react with this sulfonate and this ethyl group this is the ethyl groups come from the sulfonate and this is the byproduct. Also benzyl magnesium chloride can react with this sulfonate N butyl O SO2 and you get this N butyl group. So, N butyl group comes to this one and ultimately it become pentyl group. Also an aryl gignard. So, aryl gignard can be generated from this bromide react with the magnesium and now you can react with this dimethyl sulfate and methyl group can be incorporated. So, these reactions are very useful. So, this is with alkyl gignard. this is benzyl gignard and this is aryl gignard. So, all of them undergo substitution reaction. Transition metal ions such as copper bromide in mediated 1 for addition to unsaturated carbonyl compounds. So, if you have a this there will be double bond here. So, if you have a this aldehyde with a double bond then with ethyl magnesium bromide if you generate from pure magnesium and ethyl bromide and then you add to this then this alcohol will generate. Also with alpha beta unsaturated here this is ketone. So, this is enone. Enone also undergo this reaction suppose there are two possibility one for addition and one to ethyl can add one for or one to this already we have discussed here is more detail. Suppose simple ethyl magnesium bromide H plus you get the 1 to addition. On the other hand if you have copper then this 1 for addition. So, with copper then this 1 for addition because this becomes copper may generate soft nucleophile generates. It reacts with the Gignard generates the soft nucleophile R2 or ETCU Br and now this adds to the ethyl here and intermediate enolate is formed which after acid treatment it gives the 1 4 addition product. Also a methyl group can be used. So, this is the difunctionalization. So, this enolate whatever is enolate is generated that can be reacted with alkyl 
like iodomethane and you get this methyl group here and after acidic work up you get the ketone. Stereochemistry, the stereochemical outcome of Gigna reaction can be predicted on the basis of Cram's rule. Cram's rule, to apply Cram's rule we designate the groups on the carbon adjacent to the carbonyl group as small, medium and large. The preferred conformation of two phenyl propanaldehyde has carbonyl group staggered. So, the carbonyl group staggered with the staggered between methyl group and hydrogen atom. So, methyl and hydrogen and this is the according to Cram rule you have to put the carbonyl group in between this medium and small group. Now, according to Cram rule the nucleophilic attack by phenyl magnesium bromide will take place from the least hindered position that is hydrogen atom side. So, if you put the aldehyde in the similar line with phenyl and methyl hydrogen in between then the nucleophile will come to the hydrogen side and you get this 3 isomer. In the case of the Gignard reagent to chiral substrate that possess a heteroatom in the alpha a modification in the application of the cram rules is required. In the reaction of S to methoxy 1 phenyl propanone with methyl magnesium bromide a cyclic structure where the methoxy group is syn periplanar to carbonyl group is formed. So, this is a chiral ketone chiral ketone and the chiral center alpha to the carbonyl. So, this is also important alpha carbonyl center is chiral. And if a methoxy group is there, so this is the coordinating group. With coordinating group, the stereochemistry will be such that this methoxy is binding with the magnesium. So, not only the carbonyl, this carbonyl as well as the methoxy group binds with the Gignard reagent. This results in restriction in the freedom of the rash to selective transition state and thus the attack takes place from the least hinder side having the methyl and the methoxy groups. So, this way you have to orient the substrate and this is the chelated transition state. So, methoxy group as well as the carbonyl group is bind with the Gignard and another equivalent of Gignard will attack such that um, between methyl and O methoxy group and you get this 3 isomer this is in the Newman projection and if you draw in the zigzag. So, this is your chiral center already now if you add the methyl group. So, here in the Newman you can see the phenyl and methoxy are trans. So, here I put phenyl and methoxy in zigzag. Now, what happens this methyl and methyl are the seen to each other. So, in this zigzag also they will be seen. So, this is the seen and here this alcohol will be there. So, this is the compound that is formed when you add methyl magnesium bromide to this methoxy containing carbonyl compound. Gignard reagent for the synthesis of other reagents, reagents such as organosilicon and organophosphorus reagents can be synthesized from Gignard reagents. We already seen the transmetallations also here you can generate organosilicon and organophosphorus reagents can be generated. If you treat with a tetrachlorosilane and phosphorus trichloride gives triphenyl phosphine and tetramethyl silane respectively. So, here if you treat with 3 equivalent of phenyl magnesium bromide then what happens this 3 phenyl group 3 phenyl groups comes from the Gignard and you get this triphenyl phosphine and 3 mg BrCl. So, triphenyl phosphine is formed. And this one tetrachlorosilane when reacts with 4 equivalent of methyl magnesium bromide then 4 methyl groups comes. 4 methyl groups comes on the silicon and this is tetramethyl silane this is very useful for internal standard for NMR. So, always in CDCL3 we add this this is the internal standard and this is the byproduct 4 mg BrCl. Now, we discuss sodium. 
So organosodium chemistry is the chemistry of organometallic compound containing a carbon to sodium chemical bond. The application of organosodium compounds in chemistry is limited in part due to competition from organolithium compounds which are commercially available and exhibit more convenient reactivity. Organometal compounds in group 1 are characterized by high polarity with corresponding high nucleophilicity on carbon. This polarity results from the disparate electronegativity of carbon and that of lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium and cesium. So, this is very important that the electronegativity defines the high polarity of the bonds are forming. The carbonic nature of organosodium compounds can be minimized by resonance stabilizations for example, PH3CNA. One consequence of the highly polarized NAC bond is that simple organosodium compounds often exist as polymers that are poorly soluble in solvent. So, this is important polymer formation because they are highly polarized polymer formation because because highly polarized sodium carbon bond. However, it can be synthesized also by transmetallation route like tra dialkyl mercury compounds by transmetallation you can generate also. For example, diethyl mercury in the soringin reaction or sorizin reaction and this mercury compound when treated with so, diethyl mercury can react with two equivalent of sodium and then you can get this ethyl sodium plus mercury. So, this is like transmetallation, this mercury is becoming free here and this sodium is displacing the mercury. So, this is called transmetallation. Sodium cyclopentyl dienide. So, this is the sodium cyclopentyl dienide, this is aromatic, we have seen cyclopentyl dienide, magnesium, momide that is also aromatic. The principal organosodium compound of commercial importance is sodium cyclopentyl dienide with the formula C5H5NA. The compound is often abbreviated as NACP or Cp minus is the cyclopentyl dienide anion. Sodium cyclopentyl dienide is a colorless solid. Although samples often are pink owing to traces of oxidized impurities. And this way it can be synthesized, also this mercury root you can synthesize also because this is acidic. So, this we have already seen that this hydrogens are acidic. So, this is acidic. Similarly, like gignard, here the sodium reagents can be also be formed from reacting cyclopentadiene. So, this is the deprotonation route from some acidic organic compounds the corresponding organosodium compounds arise by deprotonation. Sodium cyclopentadienide is thus prepared by treating sodium metal and cyclopentadiene. So, with two equivalent sodium two equivalent cyclopentadiene you get this cyclopentadienide and hydrogen. So, hydrogen gas is liberated. Reaction based on sodium metal, there are various reaction, Birch reduction, this already we have discussed, so we will not be discussed again. Bubblank reaction, this also we have discussed. Acyline condensation, this we will discuss today. Birch reaction, we will discuss and Birch fitting reaction, we will discuss. So, first we will discuss acyline condensation. So, acyline condensation is a reductive coupling of two carboxylic ester using metallic sodium to yield an alpha hydroxy ketone also known as acyloin. So, this is the acyloin alpha hydroxy ketone and two equivalent of ester with four equivalent of sodium you generate the acyloin alpha hydroxy carbonyl compound. Open heating of a carboxylic ester with sodium in an inert solvent a condensation reaction can take place to yield alpha hydroxy ketone after hydrolytic workup. So, an ester is converted to an of course, two equivalent is required because two R is coming here. So, 
there is a CC bond formation is happening. So, this we can see, we will see in detail also in the mechanism CC bond formation. This reaction is called acyline condensation name after the product thus obtained. It works well with alkanoic acid ester. So, if you have a alkyl group here R, R is equal to alkyl, then the reaction is much more facile. Mechanism for the mechanistic course of the reaction, the diketone 5 is an intermediate since small amounts of 5 can sometimes be isolated as a minor product. It is likely that sodium initially reacts with the ester 1 to give the radical anion species 3 which can dimerize to the dianion 4. So, this is the reaction that this ester, ester first reacts with sodium and one electron is given to the ester, then this anion radical is formed and now this will dimerize. So, this dimerization will happen here. Radical and we will react another radical and generate this dianion and by release of two alkoxide aurodas the diketone hive is formed. So, here what happens? this alkoxide groups will be eliminated and a diketone will be formed. So, this diketone was a because this uh, minor product sometimes is obtained. So, this diketone is an intermediate here intermediate and further reaction with sodium leads to dianion 6 which is the hydroxy ketone 2 upon aqueous work up. So, this is the in dianion 6 and after aqueous work up you get this one. So, what happens when you add to the 2 equivalent of sodium. So, what happens here? R dot O minus and here also dot if we write same side also dot dot O minus and this dot this can be drawn like this because two radicals di radical will make a bond here and you get a double bond here that is why the 6 is formed and after aqueous work up you get this diol in diol and now one enol will tautomerize to the carbonyl and that is why the alpha hydroxy ketone is formed. So, this is the mechanism and this is very important dimerization the C C bond formation. So, CC bond formation is happening followed by uh, elimination of two alkoxide group to generate a diketone and then sodium attacks again. So, 4 equivalent of sodium is generally required for this reaction and dianion will generate with a double bond here. Now, the aqueous work up will generate the alpha hydroxy ketone and intermolecular reaction is possible substance containing two ester groups leading to the formation of a carbocyclic ring. This reaction is especially useful for the formation of rings with 10 to 20 carbon atoms, the yield depending on ring size. The presence of carbon carbon double or triple bonds does not affect the reaction. The strong tendency for ring formation with appropriate diester is assumed to arise from attachment of the chain ends to the sodium surface and chain ends. So, it binds with the chain ends the sodium that is the ester group. Uh, and thereby favoring the ring closure because this ester group this sodium can bind right. A modified procedure which uses trimethyl silyl chloride as an additional reagent gives higher yields of acyloin. In the presence of trimethyl silyl chloride the B so silylated in dial which you will see in the next slide is formed and can be isolated. Treatment of 7 with aqueous acid leads to the corresponding acyloid. So, if you have a trimethyl silyl chloride 
and sodium then excess sodium then you get this disilen species and now with aqueous workup you get this alpha hydroxy ketone and these are the by products r1 sime3 plus four equivalent of sodium chloride so here minimum four equivalent you need examples like here this is are the two ester groups here and in the same molecule same molecule two esters group now what will happen this uh, another ring will form here the alpha hydroxy ketone is formed here and now with clemens and condition zinc acl you get this alkylation so this groups are eliminated and alkyl groups come here this was published in 1958 in jacks also uh, interlocking rings can be prepared by this method with sodium xylene 140 degree centigrade followed by acetic acid treatment if you have a normal cyclic ring and another cyclization like with the diester where the cyclization will happen and this is called catenin catenin so this catenin species will form that interlocking happens so not only the acylon reaction but interlocking also happens because these are large rings and you get the catenin species when you do the reaction under this acylon condition so this was published in jacks 1960 bharch reaction named after charles adolf bharch it is a coupling reaction in organic chemistry organometallic chemistry and this is an inorganic main group polymers higher by two alkyl halides are reacted with sodium metal in diether solution to form a higher alkane so here 2rx plus 2 sodium rr plus 2 nax the mechanism begins with a single electron transfer from sodium metal to the alkyl halide which dissociates to form an alkyl radical and sodium halide salt another molecule of sodium performs another act to the alkyl radical to form a nucleophilic carbonyl the carbon and then adducts another molecule of alkyl halide in a nucleophilic substitution reaction to form the final couple product and another molecule of sodium halide salt so this is the mechanism that the single electron transfer happens the rx and here what happens the r dot is formed this should be this side because x gets minus and this is the single electron transfer is showing here so r dot and x minus is formed and na becomes na plus again another electron is given to the r dot so what will happen so again r dot become r minus and now this r minus sodium so this is a nucleophilic species so r minus na is a nucleophilic species which can do a sn2 reaction with on reacted rx so what was not reacted and now you get this rr bond example like here so what will happen first this bromide will react because this is good leaving group so this will form minus na now a substitution intramolecular substitution reaction will give this intramolecular substitution reaction first fitig reaction the chemical reaction of aryl halides with alkyl halides and sodium metal in the presence of dry ether to give substituted aromatic compounds charles adolf wurtz reported what is known as wurtz reaction in 1855 Involving the formation of a new carbon-carbon bond by coupling of two alkyl halides. On the other hand, Fittig, William Rudolf Fittig, in 1860, after five years, extended the approach to the coupling of an alkyl halide with an aryl halide. So here, two alkyl halide in the Bach reaction. Here, one alkyl and another aryl halide. so that is the fitting uh, 
contribution that aryl halide was used this modification of the vas reaction is considered to a separate process as named for both scientists like here an alkyl halide and aryl halide is reacted with two equivalent of sodium you get this r carbon carbon form formation r aryl sodium bromide sodium iodide are the by products so the mechanism is organo alkali mechanism when the aryl halide is reacted with sodium metal and intermediate organo alkali compound is formed which is followed by a nucleophilic attack of the alkyl halide as shown below thus the required alkyl aryl is formed so first aryl halide react with two equivalent of sodium it generate this anion sodium species so here minus is there plus nax and now this is a nucleophile and now this aryl nucleophile will react with this alkyl halide to generate this carbon carbon bond formation happens and nax is the by product also the radical mechanism also is possible so here the sodium atom acts as a moderator for the formation of alkyl radicals and aryl radicals these alkyl and aryl radicals now contribute to form a substituted aromatic compound as shown below like here single electron transfer so this was the first formed actually the radical and again the then the carbon and so here the radical is formed first so aryl radical is forming here also alkyl radical so separately the sodium is reacted with aryl halide and alkyl halide and two radicals are formed now these two radicals will react two radicals react so acc bond formation a substitute aromatic compound is formed example here ch3 cl will be so this is the aryl halide this is the alkyl halide and in presence of sodium ether you get the toluene so chlorobenzene is converted to toluene this is the method that with sodium vas fitting condition you can get this substituted aromatic compound so today first we have discussed gignard reactions and gignard reagents are very useful for the reaction to carbonyl compounds also substitution reactions and addition reaction so carbonyl compounds are reacted if you have a simple formaldehyde that can give primary alcohol then aldehyde the other aldehydes give the secondary alcohol and ketone give the tertiary alcohol also when the amide can give ketone also it can add one for fashion to the Uh, and as well as one to fashion so normally gignard reagents are hard nucleophile they add one to fashion and with cdm3 it selected with the one to product and with copper what happens it becomes the soft reagent in presence of copper and one for addition products are formed also gignard reagents have been used for trans metallation like cadmium chloride the r2 cadmium can be formed also different tin compounds phosphine compounds boron compounds can be reacted with gignard reagent and define this gignard r can be added to this boron or tin species also it can react with pcl3 and tetrachlorosilane to generate respectively like phenyl magnesium bromide on reaction with pcl3 can generate triphenyl phosphine and tetrachlorosilane on react with methyl magnesium bromide can generate the tetramethyl silane which are used in the nmr solvent also the selectivity and reduced selectivity of gignard addition has been observed in epoxide addition it attacks selectively from the less hindered side and in sn2 fashion that is the inversion of stereochemistry is observed also gignard reagents are useful for the Uh, coupling reactions normally uh, when iron is used then the coupling reaction between alkyl gignard and aryl halide compound can be the coupling reaction can be performed with iron trees acetyl acetonate on the other hand when both are aryl like aryl gignard and aryl halide then the nickel catalyst is used then we have seen the sodium 
and already batch reduction and bubble balloon reduction already discussed earlier so it was not discussed today so today we have discussed first the acyl ion condensation and here two equivalent of ester generate the alkanoic ester generate the alpha hydroxy ketone which are called acyl ion and this is the radical process where this radical is formed carbon dot o minus which dimerized to generate the carbon carbon bond and then the diketone is formed ultimately further addition of sodium to the diketone generates the alpha hydroxy ketone also we have discussed the varch reduction this is the sodium mediated reaction between two alkyl halide and the alkyl alkyl bond is formed on the other hand when aryl halide as well as the alkyl halide is used that is the varch contribution that is called phytic contribution that's called varch phytic reaction between and aryl halide alkyl halide and sodium then you get the substituted aryl compounds thank you